In this tutorial, I'll take a quick look at the free program JMOL, which is designed for viewing chemical structures, and I'll show how to export a molecule from JMOL and import it into Blender. JMOL is an open source Java viewer for chemical structures in 3D. The web address is jmol.org, which redirects to jmol.sourceforge.net. Click download to go to the download page. To download the zip file, click the download link. When the download starts, save the zip file. Go to the folder where you downloaded the zip file and in Windows you can double click to go inside it. There is the JMOL folder which needs to be extracted to a suitable destination. In Windows you can right click and copy and paste to a suitable destination. Go to the folder where you extracted the JMOL folder, go into the folder and to run JMOL either double click on the batch file or on the JMOL jar file. Because JMOL is written in the Java programming language, it is designed to work with the internet. GetMol gives internet access to small molecules and GetPDB internet access to large molecules. With GetMol, you type in the name of the molecule and JMOL will use the NCI NIH name resolver. It also uses PubChem as a source of 3D data. Both sites are interesting and worth a visit. I'm going to type in ethene. Drag with the left mouse button to rotate the view and notice that JMOL always presents double bonds so that you can see them. Zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. Be careful when zooming in not to go inside the molecule. In the display menu, you can set the size of the bonds and the atoms. You can also change both in the Edit Preferences dialog box, where you have more control over the sizes, and there is the useful JMOL default button. JMOL comes with a set of tools, including a basic animation system, and it has a model kit that allows you to edit molecules. For larger molecules, JMOL links to the Protein Data Bank. You need to know the PDB ID. 3BSE is an example of a DNA molecule. Blender can import PDB files, so I'm going to focus on small molecules. In the file menu, there is an export submenu, but there isn't a format there that can be imported into Blender. If we right click in the view area, there is another export submenu that has these 3D markup language formats. X3D format can be imported into Blender. Go to the folder where you want to save the X3D file and give it a meaningful name. In Blender, press X to delete the cube. File, Import, X3D. Go to the folder where you save the X3D file, select it and import. Change the view to the front view and zoom in with the mouse wheel. Taking a look at what we've got, there are spheres representing the hydrogen atoms and spheres representing the carbon. There are cylinders representing the hydrogen bonds and cylinders representing the carbon. There are single cylinders representing the carbon to carbon bonds and the bonds have spheres at the ends to round them off. Going back, to the original import, I'm dragging to make the properties window wider and dragging to open up the outliner window. The first two spheres are carbon atoms, the next four spheres are hydrogen, 
The remaining spheres are at the ends of the bonds and are pretty pointless, so I'm going to delete them. Hold down Shift and select all the other spheres. There's an extra camera at the end that we don't need. Hold down Shift and select that. And with the cursor in the 3D view, press X to delete them all. Drag to open up the Properties window. Select a hydrogen atom and click the Material button. Give the material a meaningful name, Hydrogen. Click the Diffuse color. The normal color for hydrogen is white, which is what it's set to. Select a carbon atom and give the material a meaningful name, carbon. Click the diffuse color. The normal color for carbon atoms is black, but black is very dark, so I'm going to set the RGB values to 0 0.02. There is a problem. If I select a hydrogen bond and click the browse material button, and change the material to hydrogen, the carbon bonds change. If I select a carbon bond and change the material back to carbon, the hydrogen bonds change. If I click the object data button, the reason for the problem is that all the cylinder objects are linked to the same underlying mesh, shape cylinder. The cylinders are a set of linked duplicates and the underlying mesh can only be linked to one material. To solve the problem, in the Object menu, make single user, object and data, selected objects, and that makes a new underlying mesh, shape cylinder 002. Select the other hydrogen bonds and link them to the same underlying mesh. Click the Material button. Click the Browse Material button and change the material to Hydrogen. For speed and simplicity, I'm going to do a join operation to join all the mesh objects together. A join cannot be easily undone, so always save before doing the join and always save as with a different file name after. In the Select menu, select All by Type Mesh, click Join. In the object menu, transform origin to geometry. Change the shading to smooth. And in the object properties, give the model a more meaningful name, Ethene. I'm going to call that the end of the tutorial, though I am going to add some material onto the end. In the additional material, I'll show you how to use JMOL to edit an ethane molecule to make a benzene molecule. And I'll take a quick look inside an X3D molecule file. I'll put all the files used in the tutorial and the finished file for you to download at my website. Click the link or the eye icon. If you'd like to subscribe, click the link or the stickman. Thanks for watching and goodbye. Click the model kit button. The default behavior is to convert atoms into carbon atoms. I'm going to, for demonstration purposes, change that to nitrogen. And if I click on this hydrogen atom, it will turn into a nitrogen atom. And if I drag to add an atom, it will be a nitrogen atom. I do actually want the atoms to change into carbon atoms. So set that back and click on the nitrogen atoms. I want this bond to be a double bond. Click on the purple bar to open up the menu. The default behavior for bonds is to increase the order, which is what I want. So as I click on a single bond, it changes into a double bond. Drag to add another carbon atom. We've now got one, two, three, four, five car carbon atoms. Drag to add another one. I want to change this bond into a double bond and drag to close the ring. I've now got one odd hydrogen atom I want to get rid of, so click the purple bar, change the behavior when we click on an atom to delete atom and delete the hydrogen atom. And then in the menus is an option to fix hydrogens and minimize and that gives us a nice benzene ring. 
The X3D file format is a text format that can be opened in a text editor. In it, there are definitions of spheres, used for the carbon and hydrogen atoms, and cylinders, used for the bonds, their dimensions and their location.